welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us this morning is Dennis Zen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Collider Movie Talk. It's Friday. I hope you can bear with me. I've been sick all week, so that's why I have the little cough drop in my mouth. It's okay. You sound great. I promise. Also, here is Christian Harloff. Yo! That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and John Roca. What's up, everybody? It's always a good Friday when I get to come back on here, so uh, I'm excited to talk about all this movie news today. A lot of stuff. Yeah, before we get into the movie <clears throat> news, a few announcements. We have we dropped the X-Men uh, Apocalypse spoilers review this morning. We also have a Warcraft non-spoilers review that came out a couple days ago. Um, also, announcement for us, 250,000 subscribers. Yay! Woo-hoo. That's pretty so awesome. thanks to, to all the fans who uh, are subscribed to us and all the people here. What, what were you saying? I was just going to say, that's, I mean, if, when you look at that, when we came over from AMC, because yeah. I think it was something like 17,000 when we came here, and within that's just about a year, and that's really a testament to you guys. Thank you guys so much for everything you've done and the fact that you're enjoying the programming. Well, thank you. Uh, and then also we have the Schmodown. You want to talk about the Schmodown today? Yeah, big uh, big Schmodown going down today. And Adam's got the graphic. There they are. Oh. Clark Wolf versus Finstock. This is a big one. If Finstock wins, he gets a title shot. I, I, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I know it's crazy. And if Clark and Clark Wolf is kind of a rising star in the league, and a lot of drama went down on the Schmoes last night. Um, JT asked Clark Wolf to be his partner. If you want to find out how that played out, go on over to the Schmoes channel and check it out. And also a reminder, on Monday, we do not have movie talk. It's a holiday here in the U.S., Memorial Day. We all are going to be at Christian's house, wow. barbecuing, and getting drunk. Yep, I'll be barbecuing. I, I like That's what I do. I just serve everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be barbecuing. We'll be getting yes. drunk. Yes, yes. that's right. Yes. That's right. Uh, Sinead, what's the first topic? The new Power Rangers movie isn't due in theaters until next March, but Lionsgate CEO John Feltheimer is already talking about sequels. Seven sequels, to be exact. In a report from Variety, Feltheimer was on a conference call with analysts when the subject of their Power Rangers movie came about. In discussing the future and the possibilities of sequels, he said, We are really, really excited about the Power Rangers movie. We could see doing five or six or seven. Even though there were mixed reactions to the costume reveal around the internet, Feldheimer cited positive responses to the new suits when discussing this interest in making so many more films. The newest film in production is being directed by Dean Israelite with a cast of five young actors starring as the Rangers. We'll have to wait and see if those seven sequels come into fruition when Saban's Power Rangers hits theaters March 24th, 2017. Dennis, what are your thoughts on the possibility of seven movies in the Power Rangers franchise? I would say let's hold on and see how the first (laughs) one does first. Because if I'm not mistaken, the first Power Rangers movie that they made actually was successful back in the 90s. And then the second one, Tank. So you're talking about five, six, or seven movies. You don't know what the climate or trends are going to be at that time. And when you're talking about even successful franchises like uh, Iron Man, Kevin Feige's not talking about Iron Man 6 or 7. They're just trying to get one at a time, do a few movies. So I personally think it's a little premature to talk about six or seven movies. Christian? I like how he turned into LeBron. Not five. Not six. <laughs> so, um, but, I, you know, the thing is, I think that I like the fact that he's being ambitious. And I think that it is, to be fair to him, it, and by using the Kevin Feige references, it. Kevin Feige couldn't have done that back in the day because it was a different landscape as where today you have because of Kevin Feige and all these other properties that are now doing this. He's ambitious and he wants to and he's hoping and he's he has, he's positive. He's optimistic that these properties will do really well. So, yeah, I basically think what he was saying was if they are all hits, then, of course, we'll do more and more and more, which makes sense. I mean, look at these silly Transformers movies. There's like going to be five or six of them, whatever, the, how many there are. So it makes sense that he would want this many. But. It's he might not be able to make those if the second one doesn't do well because they're going to make two. That's that's a given. We'll know yeah. that that's going to happen even because the, I the first movie it's got enough. Every time we talk about Power Rangers, and I'm guaranteeing there are people in the chat room right now that are very excited about the movie mm-hmm, as yeah. they should be if they grew up with it. I get it. So they're going to be out there to see it. The question is how many of them will want to see it? How will they respond to it? And then we'll see if we get two. 
then we'll start talking about three, four, five, six, and seven. I mean, now you're talking Avatar stuff. Yeah, yeah. Roka? Yeah, uh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in both camps here. I, I, as I agree with you, Dennis, in that, like, be cautious. Let's see how the first one does. Let's see how people respond to the actors. Yeah, already there's kind of flack about the costume that Elizabeth Banks was wearing. And, but, and you're right as well, Christian. Like, you, you want someone who's in charge of your property to be ballsy. You know, if you're going to step out and really try to separate yourself from the other franchises, you got to do something bold. Predicting that you're going to have six or seven is, you're right, it's a little LeBron-esque, but also I, got, I appreciate the ballsiness of that. Like, he believes in his property this much, believes in the actors, directors, what he's got set up, and there's a hardcore fan base. <clears throat> let's, not, let's not forget how many people went insane for that fan film that right. came out that, you know, they had to take down, but was so awesome. And so there, there's always going to be a hardcore fan base for the Power Rangers movie. You just hope you, they're in the right hands to do a really good job with it. And so I think it's I think it's a bold move, and he has to do that, and it shows confidence in the property. Yeah. I'd like to have at least a trailer out so that people can, like, <laughs> respond to that. And we just have this one image, which I yeah. think, even though they say mixed, I think most people thought like that, that. that's kind of the, the best that yeah, they could I, do. I did too, but I, I actually, I think that he's talking to the fans. Yeah, it's yeah. really what he's doing here, because I, don't, I think that what he's letting people know is that don't worry, it's not a one and done. Mm -hmm. We have plans for this franchise for a very long time. So if you are, because we're not, I don't think anybody on the table are like hardcore Power Rangers fans, but I think the hardcore fans are like, cool, if people yeah. support this movie, I'm going to get five, six, seven of them. Like for me, being a Star Wars fan, knowing that when they made the announcement that they're going to make a ton of movies, granted it's Star Wars, and you know yeah. it's, a, it's a little different, but you know that you're a getting it. A little different, just a it's little. It's a little different, different but, the, but it's still, I don't, I'm not going to take away from the Power Rangers fan base to where the, a hardcore fan is a hardcore fan. Right. So if they hear the guy who's producing the movie say, we're going to do five, six, or seven, as a Power Rangers fan, I would be saying, that's cool. That's great. Now I hope people see it. It gives me more investment in the movie that I want other people to see it because that means I'll keep getting movies if they're good. Sinead, are you a hardcore Power Rangers fan and would you like to see five, six, seven movies? Um, I am one of those people that grew up with the Power Rangers. I mean, I'm a 90s kid and growing up, this was my jam. Mm -hmm. Every single day my sister and I watched this and I actually had no nothing bad to say about this image. I know a lot of people did. I was I'm really really looking forward to this movie, but I agree with you guys what you're saying. I think it's extremely optimistic and you have to give it to property which we're an entire year away from this movie how can you actually right. say that well i think i think what christian said is a great point the star wars i think it's an it's analogous because coming out of the prequels it left a lot of bad, bad taste in a lot of people's mouths and when they announced that they were going to do a new one people were you know excited but they weren't sure what to expect cautious, cautious yes but as the buildup was happening they started announcing more movies and more movies and it gave you confidence as a fan that they were going to do the right thing with the property so perhaps this is kind of the same game plan or blueprint okay all right what's next <laughs> Lionsgate has released the newest trailer for Deep Water Horizon, the true story based on one of the world's largest man-made disasters to occur in the Gulf of Mexico. In a story meant to honor the brave men and women whose heroism saved many on board the oil rig known as Deep Water Horizon. Directed by Lone Survivor director Peter Berg, the movie stars Mark Wahlberg, Kurt Russell, John Malkovich, Gina Rodriguez, Dylan O'Brien, and Kate Hudson with the film opening in theaters on September 30th. Christian, what did you think of the new trailer for Deepwater Horizon? I loved it, man. I really enjoyed this trailer a lot. And I think that the second I saw from the director of Lone Survivor, and, oh, Berg's doing this? Great. These are the movies that Berg excels at. And he, he, we've seen his partnership with Mark Wahlberg before. They they know each other really well. He knows what to get out of uh, Wahlberg as an actor. It made me a little sad because I saw Dylan O'Brien knowing what that poor kid's going through. So to yeah. see to see that ha uh, see him up and on his two legs, I was like, oh, that's kind of hard especially what this movie's about yeah. but yeah it's 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 one of those movies that i still i don't know the the whole story of what happens i don't know if Wahlberg's character survives if he gets back to his family but i want to know i want to know more about it and i think um this is a movie like i said berg does these movies well and the trailer itself set me up to care about what's happening um there even it's funny because having both daughter and wife that, and watching this i immediately re related to this and i can only imagine what it was like for this guy to be away and trying to survive to get back to his family and, and i just saw uh the finest hours which i thought was all right mm -hmm. different movie but yet yeah, the yeah. same mm -hmm. um and this i think is a movie that might do this uh, do it a lot better I really liked the trailer as well. I thought it was intense and emotional, and it, it kind of straddles that line because you can cross over and be cheesy and yeah. go overly cliched, but yeah. it doesn't do that. I'm also a fan of Peter Berg. He did one of the most 
I think recently underrated action films with The Rock that no one talks about. The Rundown. Yeah, oh, I yeah. love that movie. So good. Um, he kind of had that miss with a uh, well, not kind of, but Battleship. a big miss with Battleship. Yeah. I think that was him do, trying to do something that he he really wasn't into. He was trying to do the big blockbuster thing, and I don't think that's his, that's his style. And I really like this. Kurt Russell's in there. Kate Hudson. It's a it's a great cast. Sorry, real quick. You know what it reminded me of a little bit? Backdraft. I had a backdraft mm. feel to it mm. on, on the boat. Well, I'll tell you, as a fan of Armageddon, I'm a fan of anything that happens on an oil rig. So I'm super excited. The movie was gr- the, the trailer was great. And I think what you're saying is right, uh, Christian. And Dennis, too, Elizabeth. This is what Berg does well. These kind of movies are where he really excels. Lone Survivor, Heroes, this kind of thing. that It's very Americana. It's very American. And you can sense that from the trailer. That's what he's going for. This was one of the worst accidents to ever happen on an oil rig. I mean, it's, it's considered the worst oil spill they've ever had um, and it was like a fireball that you could see from 40 miles away so it's yeah. a really serious thing and 11 people died so it's a legitimately huge explosion that happened on, on an oil rig like this and I think Wahlberg excels at these kinds of movies as well and you're right their partnership was really well done in Lone Survivor and so you see this is where Wahlberg he, this is what we like about Wahlberg he's coming into this role as this kind of it's almost like an everyman for kind of replace not necessarily Tom Hanks but that kind of feel of, a, of another other American guy with a certain kind of vibe to them and you follow them through my only complaint about the trailer is I would like to have seen more Kurt Russell a little less Kate Hudson a little more Kurt Russell would have gotten me even more stoked but I get it it's the story about him coming back to his wife so you really need to you know reinforce their relationship I just would like to have seen a little more Kurt Russell as a fan of his what do you guys think about the release date September 30th so we're seeing this trailer yeah. now but the I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, this isn't coming out until, until makes then. Makes sense for the scale of the movie and for where it's at. It's not the beginning of September, which you, uh, I think, aptly coined the new toilet bowl, yes. um, which is <laughs> which is true. Um, but I think that it, it's the perfect time. I think it's that September, early October weekend. I don't necessarily think it's going to be an Oscar film. It might be, but uh, but it's a good date to get that out there because it's not a, a big budget summer film. Doesn't really should shouldn't hit in there, um, but I, I think it's the perfect time for this movie to come out. I think it's going to probably hit in a time where there's just there's not a, a lot out there. But Wahlberg, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, is a name is a star name that can create interest. I don't necessarily know about selling tickets, but but creating interest and then hearing word of mouth is going to help this movie. If the movie turns out to be good with. Peter Berg, I believe, and that's what kind of happened with Lone Survivor. It wasn't a big hit, but it it kept drudging along. Where Mm -hmm. it hit that period of time where there wasn't that many movies that were out, and it got good word of mouth, and people kept seeing it, and so it eventually made a decent amount of money. And it'll be nice to see Gina Rodriguez in something like this. It's nice to see her careers. Like she's not taking the big roles; she's taking these smart roles in these smart uh, in these films to kind of build her credibility on film. It's smart. It's just all around. She's gonna have a big career yeah i mean she, she's because so she's good. been rumored for all these big movies but she you're like you said she's she's hit, just mm-hmm. hitting it here and there to where you just start to pepper yourself in there where people are like oh yeah oh gina rodriguez where the name starts to go that's yeah. how a movie star a real movie star slash actor is built yeah. is that's how tom cruise built himself like that's that people don't do that anymore yeah. people just go look at our next big star and they throw them in there they and force we force them upon you we start yeah. to reject them because like it's like Taylor. nah i don't I, I, they haven't proved themselves to me but when you start doing things like what gina rodriguez is doing just pepper yourself in there yep. and start oh she was really good in that oh she was good in that small role and then you start getting the lead roles that's how a movie star is built yep. Sinead did you watch this trailer and what do you think I did I watched it again actually um, I think it looks good for someone who doesn't know too much about the story only just like little bits that what I've heard and my mom's I've, my mom's talked about it before but I didn't personally follow this when it happened um, and the trailer got me excited about the story just yeah. to like kind of figure out what happened when all of this went down um but i do think the release date is a little weird you know like it just kind of seems like after the summer where everyone's super excited but before like winter i don't i'm not quite sure how i feel about a september release date because it seems like a pretty hard hitting hard hitting movie that would do well over the summer I don't know if it would do if it's summer numbers because you have so much competition. Yeah, this there's is, a lot of competition. Yeah. yeah, this is just a smaller budget kind yeah. of film. So I think that I, I'm, I think that the end. If I would agree with you, if it was the beginning of September, if it yeah. was the at the end of September or October, I think is a perfect time for this movie. It'll probably do numbers that they're going to be happy with. Yeah. All right, guys, let's check in with Wendy in the chat room. What are they saying about uh, Power Rangers and the Deep Water Horizon trailer? 
Well, first off, a lot of go Clark and go Team Clark, and yay, red shirt guy is back. <laughs> red shirt guy. <laughs> red shirt guy. Don't even wear a red shirt. <laughs> All right, for the Power Ranger story, it's not by our sale yet, but most of the chat's already selling this. A lot of them saying they grew up with this, but they're just not excited about it. Hmm. Uh, Paul Mafoso, Maf Mafosa, sorry, Bullshit. I just butchered that, uh, asked, who asked for seven sequels? They must be really confident in this property. And Raymond Virata says, I'd rather have one good Power Ranger movie instead of seven mediocre films. And for the Deepwater Horizon trailer story, some of the chat is excited about this, while some doesn't have any interest in the story. Chris Robinson says, this trailer was fire. And Ishmael Bennett says, I love Backtrack, so I am into this. All right. Now, let's go on to our first buy or sell. Shanae, what do we got? 20th Century Fox has released the first official image from Ridley Scott's Alien prequel sequel known as Alien Covenant. The first look shows Captain Watterson's character revealed to be named Daniels, with nothing revealed to be known about the character other than the fact that she has short hair. Alien <laughs> Covenant will pick up 10 years after the events of Prometheus and finds a crew aboard the colony ship Covenant headed for a remote planet. The crew soon find a paradise planet occupied solely by David, the survivor of the Prometheus expedition. The movie opens on August 4th, 2017 and stars Waterston, Michael Fassbender, Danny McBride, and Billy Crudup. Roca, buy or sell the first image from Alien Covenant. Okay, I absolutely buy the image. I think it looks great. I'm super excited to see what Ridley's gonna do next. I'm one of those people that didn't think Prometheus was as terrible as other people thought. I think I, I saw what Ridley was going for. I liked that he was trying to push the boundaries of the mythology and of the world he had created. Um, yeah, was he successful? Probably not for the most part, but there was enough there, especially the character of David, to get me excited for the film. I love the way this is set, or the, the image is set up. I love the feeling of the image. You have almost like a fire there in the back, you know, so you see her. She's in the middle of an action situation, taking a break to figure out what to do next. So already I'm excited about it. I'm not 100% sold on Waterston yet. I wasn't the biggest fan of Inherent Vice, so I'm a little concerned about it, but I want to see uh, what this goes, what uh, really is going to do with this going forward. And Danny McBride being in it is really interesting to me. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm like kind of excited to see what he can pull out of uh, these, these actors in this film. I'm going to buy this image as well. I'm also in your camp where I actually like Prometheus. I mean, it, yeah. obviously it wasn't as good as Alien or Aliens, right. but I thought it was entertaining and it did build on the lore of, of the franchise. Yeah. Waterston, I, I, I like her. Besides Inherent Vice, I thought she was good in uh, the Steve Jobs movie. Did you see her? Oh that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I she forget played, that she, played she was the in that. Yeah. Yeah. Full, yeah, that's right. She was and then that. she kind of has in, in this picture. We, she kind of has that Ripley looking vibe, mm -hmm. or, or maybe even Vasquez, like with with the outfit and yeah. the short hair. So for me, if, I, I, I'm interested in seeing this, Christian. I buy the image as well, and I'll tell you, I think that Ridley Scott's going to wind up J.J. Abrams in his, in his own project, meaning that he's pretty much going to give an homage to the first Alien. I mm -hmm. think that's what we're going to get. And even though he's probably going to go into Aliens, which is a Cameron film, is where with Damien Bride, I think he's going to serve the Paul Reiser role. Oh um, yeah, like that, right. kind of, that kind of role. Uh, but this image, yeah, this looks like it looks like Alien. I I'm on the side that you guys were talking about, and I didn't love Prometheus. I thought it looked gorgeous. I mean, yeah. and nobody can deny that it is a gorgeous looking movie. I actually don't think it furthered the mythology. I think it teased us with trying to further the mythology, mm -hmm. but never really did. It just kind of gave. Is she going to that planet? Is she not? I mean, there were so many questions. There's too many more questions uh, were posed than were answered in okay. that particular movie. But. This does look like it, we're getting back to basics. I want it to be simple. I want it to be, I think Ridley Scott realizes that. And this image, it, immediately, if you showed me this, if I didn't know anything was coming out and you said, what do you think this is from? Oh, it looks like it's from the alien world. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it immediately. So for that reason, it's it's Ridley Scott going back to to what he knows. Of all the people coming back, are you guys excited that it's Fassbender? Yes, back yes. To the character yeah, because he was right. one of the so highlights good. of, of yeah. Prometheus. And Nobody I do, disagrees with that. Yeah. And I do love that it is finally, they're calling it alien covenant in yeah. versus trying to play remember the whole thing about prometheus like is it an alien prequel or right. is it not and and they end up kind of shooting themselves in the foot yep. because f a lot of the casual audience didn't know and so they didn't go see it yeah so. yep it's true all right what's next 
James Cameron has been developing Battle Angel, an adaptation of the manga series Battle Angel Alita, for years now. But with his attention pulled in the direction of the Avatar franchise, there has been very little forward progress until recently when Cameron handed over directing duties to Robert Rodriguez, with the filmmaker looking to find the right young woman to lead the film. Now, in a report right here on Collider.com, sources are saying that Maze Runner, the Scorch Trial standout, Rosa Salazar, has landed the coveted role of Alita. Battle Angel takes place in the 26th century and tells the story of an amnesiac female cyborg who is rescued from a scrapyard by a doctor and rebuilt with no memory of her previous life except for some kick-ass martial arts skills. She then becomes a bounty hunter and tracks down vicious criminals. No word yet on the start of production. Dennis, do you buy or sell Rosa Salazar as Battle Angel? I buy it, even though I thought Maze Runner, Scorch Trials, it was whatever movie for me. It wasn't wasn't for me. She was a standout in that film. She played Brenda, uh, one of the kind of I don't know resistance fighters or whatever. Yeah. Um, this situation is different than Ghost in the Shell, where this takes place in a post-apocalyptic United States. Her character's name is not a Japanese name. Mm. Um, I think the memories that she has from the past is like of being on Mars. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's a different situation than than what Scarlett Johansson and Ghost in the Shell is. Uh, as far as Robert Rodriguez, I, I, I think I forgot or maybe I, I didn't remember that he was directing this uh, instead of James Cameron. I uh, didn't really care for Machete. I, I like Planet Terror. I hope he kind of, I, I guess he has to go away from that style. Mm -hmm. For, for this type of movie and do something. I, I really like Desperado. I like From Dust Till Dawn. So hopefully we get that Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Roca? Uh, yeah, I think it's, I'm super excited. It's my second favorite anime behind Ghost in the Shell. I just, I like the female led animes. I just really have a fan of those kinds, especially when they're dealing with uh, this thing of cyborg. You know, I'm excited to see if they're going to bring in Desti Nova, Dr. Ida. I'm, I'm so excited to see what they're going to do with this property. I think Roger Rodriguez is a nice choice. I mean, his track record is, a lot of directors would love to have his track record. Yeah, there's a couple of misses on there, but there's some really good hits and some good solid work as a director, which you mentioned, Dennis, a couple of the movies that he's done really well. And I like the casting. Uh, Salazar, once again, I'm a big fan of Latinas getting a shot at doing, showing what they can do, getting lead in, leads in properties. Some of the, and she's got a really good resume. She started off. She's from Greenbelt, Maryland, which I'm I'm from D.C. Maryland area, so I'm already a fan of hers. D.C. Virginia, that kind of thing. But I liked her a lot in uh, American Horror Story, and I liked her in Parenthood. She did a nice job with her arcs on there, and she's got this kind of real tough look about yeah. her, which I think will really work for the character. Uh, and I think she can carry off what happens with this. Uh, character if they're going to go past the first movie with her. So I'm super excited. I definitely buy this. Christian? Yeah, I buy her in it as well. And I think that more so than just, you know, it, absolutely, it's a great that, you know, Latina's getting a shot. But yeah. I also think the fact that an unknown is getting a shot. Yeah. And someone who, because take the example of Scarlett Johansson, who makes sense. You put her in a movie. Like, I know there's been some backlash on it, but you put it, I understand why business-wise they put it because she is one of those particular people that is selling tickets. And we didn't mention yeah. her before in our, our pre-conversation. Yeah. But... Um, with this girl, I think that Robert Rodriguez, what he does well, are strong females. Yeah. He's done that very well in everything. There's whether even when, if it be a villain with uh, Eve Green in I didn't love. I actually I think I, I like Sin City too more most than any oh, more than really? I, I actually oh. liked it more than other people I, as well. I, like, I you, didn't hate you, it. You and I are in, are in the minority, but I actually wound <laughs> yeah. up liking uh, that movie. But I really liked the first Sin City. Yeah, uh, I thought that he adapted that very well, and I think that when he is when he's given particular projects that he's just invested in, and he and this seems to be one of those. Not that he's not invested in his other movies. I just think that maybe Sin City two to a lot of people had kind of worn out his welcome. Mm. I think for me, I liked the first Machete. Uh, I did not like the second. I mean, mm. I even enjoy the second one, but I, I realize it's not great. The problem is those B movie things that he keeps doing. It's like him and Tarantino trying to put that B movie back into the public. It, it's fun that they loved them as kids. And I think it's something that Kevin Smith is doing now, like those little fun projects, but he's not trying to make them kind of mainstream. And that's why for him, it does. He can make a hundred of them. It doesn't matter. He's not yeah. trying to do it. I want Robert Rodriguez to stop doing that and focus on stuff like this. And by putting a girl like this and seeing if he can kind of make a star out of her and get the best out of her, yeah, I like it. I buy it. It's a great challenge for him at his career where he's at right now too, because it's a real, it's it's a property that's it's already been written, kind of like Sin City. So he has a little bit of a, a template or a blueprint or foundation to go from. But it pushes him as a director. Yeah. What can you create? Can you really bring this world to life? You know, and make it so interesting. I, I when I'm not a Sin City two fan. 
absolutely love Sin City 1, absolutely. And so I want to see what he can do with this, and I think it's a great challenge for him to see what about his sensibilities as a director that he can bring to this property and expand the universe and challenge himself. All right, what's next? <clears throat> 20th Century Fox has released a set of new Independence Day Resurgence posters that prove all landmarks in our world are prime destinations for eventual extraterrestrials. <laughs> the posters show no that no building is safe with the alien invaders targeting the Statue of Liberty, the Washington Monument, the Eiffel Tower, and Big Ben. Independence Day Resurgence opens June 24th and stars Liam Hem Hemsworth, Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman, Judd Hirsch, Micah Monroe, Jesse Usher, Cela Ward, Brent Spiner, and Vivica A. Fox. Christian, do you buy or sell the new posters from Independence Day Resurgence? Um, um they, they go for the monuments. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'll buy them because it, it, you, you get, that's going back to what we just said before. You, you look at this image, you know exactly what it is. So it's, I, I just, there's enough promote they're really marketing the hell out of this thing mm -hmm. right now and and they should but i said it the other day i'll say it again i don't think this movie is going to be good but i can't wait to see it <laughs> i can't wait to see it i don't know it's just i think it's a movie to me that is just screams out come watch us in the theater you'll leave saying i was entertained it was fun and that's what i'll that's all I want this movie to be is fun. And these yeah. posters, let me know. Okay, remember in the first one when they blew everything up? They're going to do it again, and you're going to watch everything blow up. And if you, like, there was a question that came in after we talked about that. Um, what are some movies that you can just turn your brain off and watch things blow up? I can guarantee you that if you ask me that question in about two months, I'll put this on my list. Um, I, yeah, this is, this is Independence Day. This is exactly, if you ask me to ask someone to say, hey, we want something to look like the second Independence Day, we were thinking about putting a spaceship over the Statue of Liberty and putting it over Big Ben. I, yeah, I'm sold. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. going to buy it as well because it takes the original hook of the first movie. Everyone watched that first movie purely because the trailers showed the alien forces blowing up all these national monuments yeah. and these landmarks. And now it's a global scale, so it's not just uh, U.S. ones. You, you have the Eiffel Tower and Big Ben. So I think that hook is going to bring people in. Uh, Roka? Yeah, the posters are great, so I buy the posters. Um, I, I, we've seen the monuments destroyed so many times in so many different films that to me it feels a little old hat, so I'm barely buying it only because the designer of the posters did a really great job with them. So they do convey the feeling of the movie. You're right, Dennis. It means it's global, right? It's more than just blowing up the White House. Right. There's more going on here. Um, but I've just seen the Statue of Liberty destroyed many, many times, and so it doesn't have the same effect for me to see these posters, but that could be just because I'm an older movie watcher, so I've seen so many things you know for a younger generation this probably works just uh, just perfectly to get them excited to see the film again so yeah i buy it how was gone with the wind in the theater it was really good <laughs> yeah i'll tell you vivian lee yeah she's a wildcat let me just tell you <laughs> Shit, hey, uh, do you buy these posters and are you excited for independence day um, resurgence i absolutely buy these posters you said like this movie you think it's going to be fun to me these posters say Say fun. Yeah. I, the trailer says fun. Now, don't get me wrong. This might be Cheese Fest 2016. Oh, and I'm it, hoping it's Cheese Fest. Come on, I think be. that will work for this movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's supposed to be cheesy, yeah. and I really think the cheese factor is going to work for a movie like this. How serious can you be with this kind of plot, with the entire <laughs> world being destroyed? I like these posters. I cannot wait to see this movie. Yeah. yeah. This is the definition of a popcorn flick. Mm, yes, absolutely. Really going is. in there. Come on connecting your, your MacBook Pro to, to an alien yeah. ship and then uploading a virus. I can't believe how excited I am for this movie. Yeah. I mean, it, I really am. I'm excited mm -hmm. for this movie. And it's, and I didn't even love the first one. The first one, when I, I remember watching in the theater and being very excited for it. Mm -hmm. And then as it's a movie that just gets so ridiculous the more you watch it. But like you guys said, it is the definition of a popcorn mm -hmm. film and how much fun I want to have watching this movie. So My only concern is... Let's keep the young talent limited, and let's you see the old the guys. Last yeah, time I too. don't want to see them. I'm, I'm with you though because <laughs> I want to see Goldblum. I want to see Brent Spiner. I want to see Bill Pullman. I don't want to see Bill, all those. Brent Spiner. Well, they're Pullman. probably gonna Brent die. Bill Pullman. Did he die? I thought he died Who? in the first one. Uh, that's what it's you thought, Pullman. but he's in. But he's oh, in the trailer. It? But what? I'll tell you, Bill Pullman's not making it out alive. Yeah, he's yeah, toast. No. Well, they already showed that in the last trailer. We got to give another good speech. All the old guys, they're all toast. They're all toast. That means I'll watch this one. I won't watch the next one. The problem is. I would, I would be against that point of view if the actors they would have got in the younger roles were better. Because even in the trailer, both the kid who plays Will Smith's yeah, son, yeah. Yeah. oh, he looks awful. And and, uh, Lee, Liam. and and Liam Hemsworth, it's just like... Talk about jam someone it. down your Yes, your he's face. one of those movie star. Why? Because he's Thor's brother. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, what's next? 
According to Variety, Jake Gyllenhaal is set to reunite with his prisoners and enemy, Helmer Denis Villeneuve, for the adaptation of Joe Nesbo's critically acclaimed suspense novel, The Sun. Villeneuve will direct the film, which allows a long-imprisoned drug addict who stages a breakout on a mission of vengeance when he discovers the surprising truths behind his father's suicide. Villeneuve will also... Uh, uh, what is happening? <laughs> Villanova will also <laughs> develop the adaptation alongside Nine Stories producers Jillian Hall and Reva Marker and Bold Films' Michael Litvak. The movie has yet to find a release date. Roka, do you buy or sell another team up between Jillian Hall and Villanova in the sun? I absolutely <laughs> buy this team up with Jillian Hall and Villanova. It's so fantastic <laughs> to see what's going to happen. Uh, with, I wanted to do that before Adam had a conniption over there. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah I, I absolutely buy this because Prisoners was so good. I just love the stuff that they're doing together. And Villeneuve so fantastic with Sicario. Once again, the best film last year. I don't care what anyone says. In my opinion, it was the best film. And I, I uh, read a Reddit with him, an interview he did, and he said it's the film he's most proud of. And this is the work he's doing. He's building. He's getting stronger and stronger. And Jake is one of these actors that when he's with the right director, he really gives everything a thousand percent of what he's got and you get to see a window into the um, amazing talent that he has as an actor and so I'm super excited with this this is a perfect thing for them to work together on it it'll push Jake to be even more you know in into the things that he's you know the more the drug addict stuff all that kind of jazz he'll really dial into it even more and you'll get a nuanced layered performance that will unsettle you and blow you away I have no doubts about that Christian yeah I, I big buy for me because the, I I I would definitely put, I put I did put it in my top ten last year. Yeah. I don't know. If I for me I wouldn't know if I put it in my as the best, but it's yeah, certainly but, one of. Mm -hmm. It was a great movie. I love. The, this is the new pairing. Whether it's you know yeah. a, a Scorsese, mm -hmm. DiCaprio, is this is Villeneuve and Gyllenhaal because they bring the best out of one another, and that's what I want to see with with this particular movie and whatever they do. I get excited when I when they hear they're both teaming up. Yeah, yeah I, I'm in no matter even for most Gyllenhaal movies now. He's a guy that I want to see what he's going to do as an actor because yeah. he's so talented. But then you pair him up with Villeneuve and I'm like, yes, please. Let's let's whatever it is. I don't care. I don't need to see any trailers. Yeah. You just t put those two names together and I'm on board. Uh, it's also a big buy for me. Yeah. I love Prisoner. Sicario also was in my top 10 last year. And it's interesting because while I, I love Gyllenhaal as an actor, it's Villeneuve that, that's drawing power for me, yeah. and I want to see what he does. Hopefully, he teams up with Roger Deakins again yeah. in, mm -hmm. in this film. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, you know what the first movie I saw him in was? Bubble Boy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that movie. Mm. I love that movie. Oh, I thought it brutal. was cute. Uh, <laughs> um, and also, I'm a sucker for these prison escape yeah. movies. Escape yeah. from Alcatraz, The Great Escape, uh, all, uh, Shawshank Redemption. So yeah. if, he, if he can bring something new to this and novel, I, I, I'm all on board. I would have liked you to have brought up Lock Up with Stallone. Come on now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but this is great for Jake, too, because if there's anyone we want to follow on a mission of vengeance yeah. coming off as a drug addict, a former drug addict, it's Jake Gyllenhaal because he's going to be insane trying to get uh, his vengeance on the people uh, who probably killed his father since he's got questions about him being a suicide. So I, I'm just, I couldn't be more excited. All right, let's check in with Wendy. What are people saying in the chat room? All right, let's go all the way back up to the Alien Covenant image. A lot of buy for the image, while some think that the image is boring. Maurice Quashi says, The Aliens franchise to me is what Star Wars is to others, and the image is an instant hype. Uh, for the Rose Sellers are as Battle Angel, a lot of excited buys for this I'm seeing. Some are selling, and some wants to wait to see a trailer before they decide if they want to buy or sell. And uh, Grimjaw Jack says, Awesome manga, good anime, what can become a movie, one of the greatest sci-fi movies. And for the Independence Day Resurgence posters, I saw a lot of sells right off the bat, mm. some hesitant buys. Um, though I'm excited to see this because they love the first movie. And Aura A says, sell the posters. Why can't we just go back to the good old days when actual art was used to promote movies instead of this sloppy Photoshop? And wow. finally, for the Jake Gyllenhaal team up, um, Power Tan says, I buy it, I liked Enemy, and I loved Prisoners. And Andrew Chambers says, Gyllenhaal is a great actor. I have yet to be disappointed by one of these films, so this is a definite buy. And finally, Manuel Monchez says, Hey, Roca, I saw you at City Walk and was going to say hi, but I got starstruck. <laughs> don't the guy, don't get starstruck. The guy in the red shirt. <laughs> yeah, That's what you'll be known as. Always come up and say hi. And please. say Bestman. He loves yes, that. Yes, oh, please, yeah. please bring up Bestman. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, thanks, Wendy, for and uh, thank you guys in the chat room for giving your thoughts. Now it's on to our weekly Friday segment, Box Office Predictions, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. This is where we predict the top five movies this weekend. Christian, what do you got up? Um, well, I had a I had a good week last week. Yes, you won. I won. For my, for I think my first win in a while. So um, I'm going to start with I think that the Angry Birds. Is not going to be number one. Uh, I, I'm going to start. I'm going to say X Men Apocalypse will be number one. Then follow right behind, not too far off. I think is going to be Alice. I think Alice is going to do a lot better than people think it's going to do. Uh, it's selling pretty well on Fandango mm -hmm. right now, and I also think that it's going to take a little bit away from X Men. Different audiences, but it's still. It's. I think families will. Maybe some of the people who wanted to see X Men are taking their kids. Maybe to see Alice. People who like the first movie. Then I think we're going to have the same kind of order that we had last week in the one, two, three spot. And that's in the three spot, I think it's going to be Angry Birds. In the four spot, I have Civil War. And the five spot, Neighbors 2. Okay, so I have the exact same list as you do. Okay. So, tiebreaker. Yeah. How much do you think X Men Apocalypse is going to make? 88 million. Okay, I have seventy-eight million. Okay, uh, Roka, what's your list? And if uh, it's the same, well, actually, give give your prediction for X Men Apocalypse as well. Um, I would say seventy-four million. Okay, yeah, that's okay. about right. So I have a high. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll bet one dollar. No, mm -hmm. is that how it works? No, my list is X Men Apocalypse, Alice Through the Looking Glass. I agree with Christian. I think it's a, I think it's tracking way yeah. higher than people think. Just like that first one, no one can explain it. It's a Transformers type thing. Uh, the Angry Birds movie definitely third. Civil War fourth, and Neighbors two fifth. Neighbors two surprisingly funny. I actually enjoyed that. And if I can give a shout out to the nice guys, please go oh, see so the nice good. guys. Yeah. Really good. So good. Is this the first time that a panel had all? The yeah, all three of us yeah. had the exact oh, same right. one. So right. definitely, it's gonna the tiebreaker it's all about box is office. yeah. 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 Box office, how well X Men Apocalypse. Yeah, will I wouldn't do. be surprised. I'll tell you that I wouldn't be surprised if Civil War and Neighbors switch spots, mm. only because um, X Men is the same genre and the same thing. Maybe some of the same people have already seen it. I still stick in them at the five that I have, but I wouldn't be surprised if they flip flop the four mm. and five spot. And I'm also very interested in seeing how else through the Looking Glass yeah. does, just because mm. the first one, while well, did financially very well, wasn't well received by the critics. Yeah. This one is not also no. being well received, and I don't know if maybe some of that luster of the first one has worn off for, for people. This might be critic proof, though. It might be critic proof yeah. for some people who just enjoyed it. Because I, I mean, I've talked to someone who last night who saw it and really enjoyed the movie. So, and oh, I was bored. Wow. Yeah, really I was, bored. I was. I'm with you. I was on. I. I. It's not a good movie in my opinion, but. We'll see. Yeah. So if I had a choice between Alice and X Men tonight, which is what's X -Men. happening, X Men, X Men yeah. more yeah. than Alice. Okay. Yeah, X Men was good. It just was, X Men just didn't live up yeah. to the expectations I had. Yeah. Okay. but I still enjoyed it. Okay, yes. because it's the thing with X Men is that you're following Days of Future Past, yeah. right. which is fantastic. Which is great. Uh, it is certainly not Days of Future Past, mm -hmm. but I thought there's enough enjoyable stuff there as an X Men fan that you'll enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, before we head into mailbag, I want to remind you that we're going to take your live Twitter questions. You can tweet us at Collider Video. And Sinead will pick out a few. What's the first mailbag? Stephen Crowley writes, hello, Collider crew. Quick question here. Is there any actor whose movie you just flat out skip? I just can't bring myself to watch a movie if Melissa McCarthy is in it. Thanks. <laughs> That's hilarious. Damn. Well, I don't know if there's one that I would just flat out skip, but there's one that I have warning signs for. It's not even because I, I hate the person or I don't like him on screen. Mm. It's just he doesn't choose. He isn't picky or choosy. Kevin James, I mean, uh. he just, he kind of, <laughs> he just, you know, he's in Mall Cop and yeah. what was that zookeeper thing? Right, and and right. just, he just kind of, whatever they offer him, he takes. Right. And so mm. if I see him in a movie, I'm just be like, okay, that's not, that's not for me. Skip. Yeah. For me, it's the same thing. There's not, there aren't people that are starring in movies. I mean, I've come, like I said, Jai Courtney could win me over with Suicide Squad because there's certain roles when he's in smaller roles that I think that he's really good in. And then there's times, going back to our previous mm -hmm. conversation, that they feel they're shoving him down your throat. But I don't, there's not not him in general, but I think for me, the one that I'm always like, uh, I don't know. And I know that he's got a lot of fans is Ben Stiller. I'm just not, Wow. just not a use Ben Stiller. He, he, annoys, okay. he annoys me. It's like, you know, there's just, just something like sometimes I don't, like there are certain movies of his that I can very much enjoy, like something about Mary. And mm -hmm. there's there's other movies that he's done that I, and, and, and Tropic Thunder, which he directed. Mm -hmm. There's just some people that you just go, no, not a fan. And then I hear, uh, I either hear that it's good or if I go see it and I have, I will never just, I hate the person, so I automatically yeah, hate yeah. the movie. It's a good movie, it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. um, but normally I just go, uh-oh. -oh when it's him 
Yeah, this is uh, dangerous. Uh, I, for me, I used to. I, I mean, if, as soon as I said Julie Roberts, I wouldn't go see it. How dare I, you? I know. I, I just didn't. I've never been the biggest fan of her, but. There are movies where, because uh, I'm not a stubborn guy about this stuff. There are movies where I, where I go see and she happens to be in it and I enjoy it. Like Money Monster, I actually enjoyed her in it. I thought she did nice work. A lot of times I feel like she overplays moments and doesn't quite get to the grittiness of what's going on. Like I think Closer, the movie, suffered because <gasps> she couldn't quite get there, in my opinion. Oh, wow. But I liked her in August Osage County. But most of the time, going through the 90s, I did not go see any Julie Roberts movies. Interesting. I love because I, Julie I, Roberts. I didn't think she, I didn't enjoy her that much um and i'm trying to find a male counterpart so i don't sound like a jerk uh but i don't you are a big i don't know, yeah. I know I you don't. big jerk in a red shirt <laughs> that you're not wearing today. justin bieber how about that anything nice. justin bieber's in i won't go see probably sinead is there an actor or actress that you just see on screen you're like yeah i'm just gonna skip that say john roca <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i get so many movies um you know what for a long time and i, I know this is gonna sound crazy but scarlett johansson used to annoy wow. the absolute mm. hell out of me um until until Marvel kind of helped mm. with that. But even up until like first Avengers, I was like, eh, about it. Cause I remember having a conversation and they were like, what are you talking about? But she just would annoy me sometimes. And I think yeah. there was just a couple roles that I would always feel like exhausted after her scene was done. Cause it was just so heavy all the time, which to me didn't always translate mm. to like what the movie needed. But I don't know, she's really come around. But if I could think of one person who I used to avoid, it was her. And I'm happy that I don't feel that way yeah. anymore. You know who now, like, and I hate to say this, but who I, I'm skeptical now every time I see a movie is Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp now Ooh. when he's in, when he's like, besides um, White Walker in, uh, in the Black last Mass. In Black yeah. Mass, uh, he, he's been doing all these wacky roles. So when I see he's going to do a movie, I'm like, okay, what kind of wacky character are we going to get now? It's not that I'm, I don't like him. I actually like him very much, but it's just yeah. I'm skeptical of him now. Yeah, I mean, Alice through the looking glass. Yeah. And just his part in there is like, come on. He's just wacky. Tonto, I, wacky. Ashton Kutcher. What? Oh, I go. will not go see anything he is in. Yeah, I mean, is he still doing things? Yeah, he was just yeah, in that Jobs movie. Nah, a week just kidding, or, you guys. A, a, just a year kidding. or two ago, like he yeah, still gets in weird. every once in a while. Yeah, I, but so don't I'm worry, like, he's the only one. That, he's the only one that saw that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> that was good. I like that. <laughs> Adam Sandoval writes: You guys said that the movie star is dead, but why does Marvel pay Robert fifty million dollars with back end points, and Sony paying Jennifer twenty million dollars up front for a single movie? Is there an exemption to what you guys said about movie stars being dead? Uh, yeah, the exception is Robert Downey Jr. is getting paid $50 million to play Iron Man slash Tony Stark. Right. He's not getting paid $50 million to play Dr. Flushmaster, the toilet bowl salesman. <laughs> In Yet. some movie. What, what movie was that exactly? Uh, it's coming up soon. Yeah. So, so, yeah, the exception is certain people in certain roles because they've already proven themselves. He didn't get $50 million in the first Iron Man. He got $50 million for Avengers because he had already proven himself in the first Iron Man, the second Iron Man, and they wanted to keep him. So, yeah, I mean, I don't say the movie star is dead, but they definitely don't. They don't sell put butts in the seats like they used to. Christian? No, Robert Downey Jr. got money for services rendered, mm -hmm. uh, and because they know like back pay. Well, yeah, because his agents can also make a play for it after and say, as long as he's doing these movies, look at the profit that the Avengers and all the Iron Man movies are going to make. He is the reason now, as Tony Stark, mm -hmm. that you are getting this money. Now. The same thing. You would have stuck. I don't think you could have because Robert Downey Jr. is so perfect. But had you found someone that was as good as a Tony Stark, or would you have found someone that was just Tony Stark mm -hmm. and started, and the movies did really well, that same person would be made, could, could make a case for $40, 50000000 million had the movies made as much as they did. Jennifer Lawrence, as the Hunger Games movies made more money, the agents could ask more. The Hunger Games sold the Hunger Games. The uh, Iron Man movies and Avengers movies the, the titles sell those movies. You go to see them because, oh, it's it's Iron Man, it's Captain America. You certainly like the actors that are in the role, but you're going because of the of the genre and you're going because of the, the comic book property. That's why you're going. And like I said, the actors certainly add to them. Like a Robert Downey Jr. makes Tony Stark what he is, but, that, but the movie star itself doesn't sell tickets the way it does. We were talking about it before. Yeah. Name me five to six movie stars that on their name alone, they sell tickets. You can't do it. You can maybe pull out a Tom Cruise. You can pull out a Melissa McCarthy. Um, you can, and we said, Ed, I'll, give you, I'll give you Scarlett Johansson right now. Who else do you have? You could used to be able to say Will Smith. 
Yeah, um, you used to, to be able to say Jim Carrey. You used to say Tom Hanks. You used to say Tom Hanks. You said that what hologram for a king that yeah, nobody, yeah. nobody cares it's, about. It's, it's yeah. a shift. It's more about it's dire- franchises. Certain directors can can sell movies, but franchises genre sells movies. It's not that the movie star is dead. It's the movie star doesn't sell tickets. Yeah, yeah. I I was we were having this discussion off air because I, I I was kind of countering and thinking that it wasn't true but it's actually I think Tom Cruise is like the last gasp of them and you would say about Downey Jr. if the judge made this amazing amount of money and was really well received right. but it wasn't and he produced it so it's like his company produced it so you know I think when he steps out of the uh, the the uh, Tony Stark role not a lot of people want to go with him in these other movies same thing with Chris Evans you know you, you know, he doesn't sell necessarily a film just because he's in it or Chris Hemsworth look, like Hems- yeah. I was just about to say Hemsworth as well great thor he can't sell the movies yeah he when did he's that movie in. ron howard's uh heart heart of the sea right yeah. heart of the do sea. that well or rush rush, rush yeah. didn't do and rush is great i love and rush did not do any any box office so it's just those kinds of things it's the you're right it's the properties it's the franchises it's the characters that sell not necessarily the actors anymore it's really rare and even jennifer lawrence is getting people are starting to be exhausted yeah. of her and they're not going to see her films joy didn't make that much money yeah. it got nominated but it didn't make that much money but those actors in the roles should certainly be rewarded for the work they're doing oh, and they are, hence the, the amount of money that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, that's it for Mailback. Now on to your live Twitter questions. Remember, you can tweet us at Collider Video, and Sinead will pick out a few. What do we got first? At ZachDA59 tweets, what are your thoughts on Tom Hiddleston in talks to play Bond? Yeah, we heard a uh, rumor about that. Um, I, I'm fine with it. I, I know a lot of that buzz is off of that series that he did, The Night Manager, which is on AMC now. I think it was... Uh, in Britain and on BBC earlier. I saw the first episode. I wasn't that impressed. I, I'm probably in the minority because I but think... But with every, him or everyone, the series? The series. Okay. Him. James Bond, I'm, I'm totally down for. Yeah. But just that series in general, I, I haven't seen enough of it. Maybe it gets better. How about you guys? I think he would be great. We actually talked about this last week on Schmoes. We had the whole discussion. Idris Elba was still my first choice, mm-hmm. uh, but Hiddleston was my second choice. Mm-hmm. So I think Hiddleston has that... It can be suave can really get that charming i want to see him play yeah. bond i think that that would be uh, very interesting i still would be okay if they said tomorrow well actually negotiations fell out and idris elba is actually your james bond that's when i i would be a little bit more excited but i'd certainly be okay with hiddleston yeah absolutely i love hiddleston so i would if you're not going to get fast bender get me hiddleston to play it because hiddleston would be great and i agree with you idris elba give him two moves i think he'd be so great to do this with two moves he'd be fantastic he still looks rugged enough and somewhat young enough to play a bond that would be a little older in age but so it's a little more seasoned so it'd be fun to go on those uh adventures with him or see those stories the rumor came out yesterday that Jamie Bell is in talks with them for Bond, and I'm like, that's totally how different. In, I don't even get that. Billy Elliot as James Bond would be so. It just I'm, I'm not. I, he's a, she's pretty charming. Jamie Bell's a good know. actor. I just don't know necessarily that he's the Bond, you know. So if Hiddleston is the choice, absolutely. He's so great as Loki. We love him in all the roles that he does. Yeah, and Night Manager. He's great in Night Manager. You're right. The series. I agree with you. The series. I watched the first four episodes. I was in and out most of the time. I was on my phone sometimes, and then sometimes watching. So. Um, but I think he was fantastic in the, in the, in the show. Yeah. Sinead, what do you think about Tom Hiddleston as James Bond? Would, um, you, would you buy that? Yeah, absolutely. What I've seen of him, I like. And I think that he has a certain presence that could yeah. really work for the character. So, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. I'd like it. All right. Uh, what's next? Tom Capone tweets, why is Nice Guys not doing better? It was fantastic. Uh, because not all good movies make a lot of money. I mean, I, <laughs> we, we talked about Nice Guys for a long time. And every time... We, we saw a promotion thing. I talked about how, who are they marketing this towards? Mm-hmm. I was like, this, it, I like it, yeah. but I'm in the rare case of those type of movies appeal to me. So I didn't know what they were doing. They're trying to appeal to this very small audience mm-hmm. with these advertisements when they should have tried to appeal to a, a larger audience. I totally agree. It's funny because my brother was in town this past week and they were deciding, him and his friend, after dinner, they're like, well, what should we go see? Because they were going to go see a movie and, and my brother still hadn't seen Jungle Book and wanted to see it. But one of the, theaters didn't have it it's like well but they have the nice guys and he's like nah, i don't want to see it i'm like yeah, you would love it i'm telling you he's like i don't even know what it's about i'm like i'm, I'm like i'm telling you this is a movie that you would really like. i couldn't sell him on it yeah. i just and and i know when my brother sits down to watch it he will love it he's gonna come back like oh, i should have seen that in the theater i'm like yeah they're probably saying the same thing to you um but he <laughs> but it's it's a movie i think same thing happened with kiss kiss bang bang yeah it's people don't know what it is i still think and i said this on schmoes and people yelled at me for it 
yes, it was marketed, but I don't think it was was marketed as strongly as it could have been. I think it was certainly marketed better than Kiss Kiss Bang Bang was. Yeah. The studio had no idea what the hell to do with that movie. But this one, I think, I still think could have had more advertisement to really show what the film was. That Red Band trailer was so good, yeah. and if that didn't hook people, then I don't know what would. Well, it's. I think what you both say is correct that the marketing was a bit of an issue because it's a '70s film, you yeah. know, and it's it's a more of adult fare. So I think it hit all of us because we're film nerds and we love this stuff, and yeah. so we'll go see it. And we like Shane Black and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is fantastic, eminently rewatchable movie. Uh, and so I think it hit the the market they were aiming for, but they didn't get as far of a reach as they would like to have done. And I think it was gonna be difficult anyway. You have a Russell Crowe who hasn't been relevant in quite some time on film, uh, in terms of leading a film. Uh, and Brian Gosling is kind of in and out recently. So you, it, they weren't too strong leads to get you in. Yeah, and they were so think, fantastic to both Yeah, they were too. great but chemistry But I do feel like the they, they are two bigger names than back when Kiss Kiss Bang Bang came out and Robert Downey Jr. Sure. and Val Kilmer sure. were in there. absolutely. Like That's probably these... why it got a little bit more of a marketing push also. Yeah. 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 Than, than I just think Bang they went the wrong route. They try to appeal to the demographic that already was going to go see it and they should have tried to widen their appeal yeah. but sometimes these small films that's all they can do you know it's a small film it's a, you know it's not a big film it's a small film it's going to hit you know it's only going to make so much like out of sight didn't make any money right. and and that was also kind of a small film for Soderbergh just sometimes it just doesn't hit it also got beat up by the competition too there was yeah. a lot out there to see yeah. I mean there really was like again something like the Jungle Book that's been out for weeks was still is still taking money away a Neighbors mm. 2 a Civil War I mean I mean Angry Birds, different audience, but there's so much variety out there that if you're going out there to pick one of those movies, the Nice Guys just wasn't the one. And I don't think it appealed to the female uh, demographic no. as strongly as like something like Gone Girl, which was an R-rated film, made 130 million, 140 million. You could take your wife or your date, or you could take your significant other to see that film and enjoy it. There's something but sexy about with, that movie too. Well, there's yeah. a hook. Yeah, yeah. There's a hook to that right, film. Right. Yeah. Right. What I think Nice Guys is like you're just having fun with it. It's a buddy cop film, and you're just having fun watching a couple of guys figure things out and try to solve this crime, which was awesome. And the little girl, mad credit. She was, great, she was yeah. fantastic. All right. You have another question. I do. At the party pooper tweets: <laughs> Is there an actor that missed out on being a big star? I'd say Josh Hartnett. Yeah, he kind of went away for a while. He was in a bunch of, I don't know, I saw that terrible, what was that movie? 40 Nights? 40 or, Days and oh, 40 yeah. Nights. Oh, yeah. terrible. Yeah, was, terrible. Remember that one he did with Harrison Ford? Uh, yeah, little, yeah, yeah, that yeah. What the hell was that stupid movie called? I forget what it was called, but it was, it was what was it? No, no, that's not it. But, uh, but he's in that no, show Adam. now, that Penny Dreadful yeah, show. Yeah, uh -huh. he's good. He's I great he's, uh, Yeah, I've heard amazing things about yeah. him. That that show was fantastic. And I mean, Black Hawk Down, it. that was a yeah. great movie. Yeah, he yeah. was good in he that. Good in that. Uh, Lucky Number Slevin was good. It's a quiet little yeah. film that was good. I didn't see that. But, I mean, his big heyday was the, the Pearl Harbor movie yeah. with, with, with Ben Affleck, Kate Beckinsale. Right. Someone who's definitely in the public consciousness but didn't break out into the movie star uh, the kind of leading man that I thought he would have was Colin Farrell, mm -hmm. um, because Colin Farrell's certainly around a lot. And he works yeah. all the time, and, but but he's but he's one of the, I think he's one of the best out there. I mean, I still say that I think it was a crime that he wasn't nominated for Saving Mr. Banks, um, but mm. but he is he's a guy that every, and I thought even though a lot of people didn't like True Detective season two, I thought he no. was the standout in the entire show. Oh, he was good at it. He was the good. series this, was. Fine, I, and I won't argue with that. But I, I, but he's a guy that every he just keeps getting these bad breaks. Like every time, like these, he's everyone will say he was great in it, movie show. Eh. So he's a guy that never kind of broke out the way I thought he was. Because they were pushing him yeah. when Minority Report came out. This is your next big thing. Did not. Uh, for me, it's Clive Owen. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to be huge. Oh, that's uh, a great point. He was one of the front runners to be James Bond. But that ended up going to Daniel Craig. He was he he had done this BMW series that that people thought oh. He's gonna be perfect as James Bond. He was in that movie Shoot 'Em Up, which I really liked, but a lot of people mm. didn't, and it was, uh, I think, underrated. Yep. Um, yeah, I just thought, and now he's he's killing it on on television on the Nick, but I just thought he was gonna be a big big star. Yeah, uh, for me it's Tom Hanks. I didn't think he oh. quite got there. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know he has some real shots. And oh, only two Oscars. <laughs> I mean, come on. I wanted five. Yeah. No, no, uh, there's a lot. Um, I. 
I think uh, there's so many, like you can say Taylor Lautner, you could say Taylor Kitsch, you can say all these guys that have gotten shots. I think Hartnett had multiple shots and he just couldn't get over. So sometimes you just can't get over. Kitsch is a good one. Lautner, yeah. I'll challenge you. Kitsch yeah, yeah, yeah. Lautner just doesn't have the, the tools. Well, the yeah. look, the look He's is more. Look, yeah, no yeah. tools. Kitsch is a great one though. Because yeah. That John Carter movie is actually, I think, yeah. better than most people give a No, yeah, yeah, and he was great in uh, Friday Night Lights. He was, and, and, and in True yeah. Detective. And True Detective, yeah. he was good he in True Detective, yeah. even though it was an uneven series, yeah. And what the hell else? He was in some Thing. Oh, he was and Lone Survivor. Yeah, he was great Lone Survivor. Mm -hmm. Is there an uh, actor or actress that you think should have been big, Shanine? Um, I mean, like should have been the one that like gets me really upset. Like, no, I you know who I thought was going to be bigger, um, who's still actually pretty relevant is James Franco. Um, yeah. mm. I I really I I don't necessarily praise James Franco's movies, but there was a time where I was like, this guy is coming in full force because he seemed like he was everywhere. And then it kind of just like never came to fruition from there. I know he had 11, 22, 63, which I didn't love. Oh, wow. I didn't love him. I thought the story is great, but mm. I didn't love him. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, I would have said Ryan Reynolds. Before Deadpool. Before Deadpool, he yeah. was definitely like sliding into that uh, video, straight to video market and B movie stuff. If Deadpool hadn't revived him, he'd have, he'd have been stuck there for God knows how long, you know. All right, what's next? Let's see here. Nicholas Hernandez tweets: Have you heard anything about the new Mortal Kombat movie? Mm -mm. No, I uh, have hey. not. Uh, no, but I hope that I hope that they revamp it and make it awesome, like yeah. like kind of a modern day blood sport. I, like I I think that. I haven't heard a damn thing about it, but I think that they could revamp that movie from what the 95, because Mark Ellis would certainly argue that it was, it's the best video game movie, well, you know, before Warcraft. Warcraft does start us into a new dimension here of, of movies, but uh, video game movies. But please, give me, give me a really brutal rated R Mortal Kombat movie. I'm in. Yeah. I, Get over here. It was yeah. It'd be nice to see it done well. Sub zero. It'd be nice to see it done well uh, because yeah, maybe Warcraft is turning the trend once and for all, and people are saying yeah, we need to put better writers, better directors. But there's a market here we can make a crap ton of money if we put effort into these movies a little more than just like oh, people still come. You know, they need to have a little more time and attention, and people will come in mass. And those of us who yeah, go ahead. And I was just going to ask you, who's is, is anyone rumored into directing those those movies? No, but wasn't no. James Wan attached to produce? It, I Get think. the directors from John Wick to do oh, that. Yeah. Awesome. Are you yeah. kidding me? I know. Or uh, Ray too, or Gareth. Kevin, yeah. I always can't pronounce it. Takara. He directed like the the web series, and Ooh. he was rumored to to do the movie, okay. but I think he he got off of that. Or even Gareth Evans maybe doing uh, mm. doing that would be great. Like, oh yeah, a little with bit the raid guy. Raid. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'd be down for that. I I, I think I like the first Mortal Kombat movie, but it's because it's like. The cheesy, Definitely. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not because it's serious, but but what you're saying is, yeah, they should make a more serious, dark, brutal version, yeah. and, then, and then I'd be on board for that. All right, let's do one more. Okay, AVP tweets, how long do you think Civil War is going to last this summer? Is it coming out of the box office soon? And if it's not long, is that a bad thing? Um, like for them, I guess he's asking, like we all expected it to dominate the box office for forever. <sighs> I did, honestly, I did think that it would have a lot more staying power than it does right now. I think this weekend is going to be the big tell because we're going to see X-Men Apocalypse. It's it's the next comic book superhero mm. movie that's going to come out after Civil War and see how much that takes away from Civil War. If Civil War is still doing strong after this weekend, then it might have longer legs than I anticipated. But, mm. but let's say X-Men comes out and that takes all of their money and Civil War drops further than we expect, then it, it will probably leave the box office very soon this is why i think december is the new promised land because when you have movies like civil war that will start to get they, they cannibalize each other like when you have a all these movies that start to come out and because people are choosing what to spend their money on or maybe you know the next week they're putting more money towards a, a apocalypse or whatever else the big movie is and then december is kind of like this open frontier and we have we saw what star wars was able to do there last year we're going to see what rogue one can do but i and then i still i think that people are going to start going after that december date i don't think it's going to be just star wars land yeah. anymore in december i think that because of this 
th- this type of thing. Like th- a lot of the movies, you know, there you get your anomalies like uh, Jurassic World last year that just sustained. And I want to see if anybody's going to do it this summer. We haven't seen it yet. It's an early summer movie season, but it's just it's hard because there's so much coming out and there's so many new movies and so many new franchises. It's hard to dominate the summer and for that long. Yeah, I think Jur- Jurassic World is a great example, Christian, because it's an anomaly in that it's a fa- you could bring your family to this. Yeah. Yes, you could bring your family to Civil War as well, but it doesn't have as wide of a reach, I would say, as Jurassic World does for generations of people being dialed into Jurassic Park. You could pass that on from to your children, to your children, and that kind of stuff. I don't think Captain America and Civil War is quite there yet. I think it might get there at some point as a franchise, but I, I think it's done well. I think the trend, I, I really, really believe the trend is happening where people are going to see it multiple times quicker than they used to. I think I see that happening more and more with my friends, and I see that happening online, people talking about going to see a film three or four times in the same week. And so that may be what's happening, and so it's losing its staying power because people are front-loading it mm-hmm. already right off the bat, and then they're gonna, then, then they walk away from it and wait for it to come out on Blu-ray or DVD or, or digital. How many times have you guys seen Civil War? I've actually saw it only twice now. I, I've only I, seen okay. it once. Oh, really? Yeah. Three times. Three times? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just once. once. Yeah. Okay. I do want to see it again. I just haven't had a chance. Yeah, me yeah. too. I kind of want to see if it's still playing the prime. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it for today's episode. I want to thank the people joining us at the on our panel today. Roka, where can people find you? Hey, guys. You can always find me at The Roka Says. That's my homage to The Rock. You can follow me there. You'll see all the shows I'm hosting and all the shows I get to be a guest on, like this one. And uh, hear me talk about the Schmodown a little bit, which is coming up next week. But I'm looking forward to today. Uh, Clark Wolf, Finstock, the anomaly finstock i don't understand it at all luckiest lucky, luckiest guy ever the world doesn't make sense at some point you keep winning and people stop calling you lucky you know at some point but yeah. who knows yeah. it's you, insane you might be saying if things go crazy finstock schmodown champion yeah. uh, yeah. there's uh, a great line in miller's crossing up is down black is white i don't understand know. it could be that Christian? Well, obviously, in two hours from now, Finstock and Clark Wolf go at it. The It looks like Finstock will get a title shot if he indeed beats Clark Wolf. So check that out. Leave your comments. If you want to see the craziness that happened last night or who Clark Wolf actually picked for her partner, go on over to the Schmoes channel. Do that. Find me at Christian Harloff, both Twitter and Instagram. And Sinead, where can people find you? I'm at Sinead DeFries, um on every social media that there is. Um, next week, we have TV Talk on Tuesday instead of Monday for Memorial Day. I'm here on Fridays and on Mailbag over the weekend. And Wendy, where can people find you? You can I'll say that again. You can find me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram Dennis.tzng. Don't forget we don't have a Monday show because of Memorial Day. But we have Mailbag this weekend. We got Schmodown coming up at 2 o'clock. Also, X-Men Spoilers Review is up. Warcraft Non-Spoilers Review is up. We've got plenty of stuff for you guys to watch. So until next week, we'll see you guys later. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.